Hello everyone, welcome to another Let's Play of Ace Attorney, of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Uh, my name is Anna Mardal, and today we're going to be starting Trials and Tribulations for the, for the first time. Um, if it follows, like, the previous two games, the first game will probably be a kind of, um, tutorial. So, I, I'm, I, it'll be interesting to see how they do this to, 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 to acclimate new players without, you know, utterly alienating old ones that are like, I know how to do this already. So that's going to be exciting. Turnabout Memories, and it looks like uh, Maya is still with us. There we go. I, I wasn't, or sorry, Mia. I wasn't sure if Mia was going to be kind of phased out or if she's just going to... Ah, how did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! Ah. Uh. It wasn't me! I didn't! I didn't do it! Is that supposed to be Phoenix? Five years earlier, Mia Fey, second trial. No, absolutely not. I refuse to believe that one at one time Mia uh, defended Phoenix from a murder charge and that that wasn't part of his reasons for becoming a lawyer. His, his reasons for becoming a lawyer up until now have always been that Edgeworth made such a profound impact on him when he they were kids and nothing about that mentions oh and by the way one time a defense lawyer saved my ass when I was wrongfully accused of murder <laughs> but fine we'll go with it retcons am I right Woo, it's finally time I'm kind of nervous ahem oh mr. Crosberg Good morning! Oh, Mia, please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I am relaxed, Mr. Crossberg. Look at me. I'm relaxed. Hmm. Let go of my lapels. Hmm. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I... I'm so sorry. It's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I, Marvin Grosberg, am at your service. Uh, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprise me. What with your earnest request last night? Let me handle this case, you suddenly said. And quite forcefully, too. I just found out yesterday about the case, I mean. What? And you've already learned all the relevant facts? Well, about that, you see. I mean, of course I have, I think. Oh, dear. In any case, don't let our client see you're so nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there? That's our client. Does he have a Vogue mask on? He does. Or, uh, I don't know if it's an actual Vogue mask, but a, a, a illness mask. G good morning there, everyone. Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, I just want to say, I'll give it all I got. It'll be fine. No problem! So what do we got? Attorney's badge, proof of my profession. The first and last time I wore it was a year ago. Doug's autopsy report. 4, 9, at 3 p.m. Cause of death was a fatal electric shock. 
Marvin is 61. He's my superior. Phoenix Wright, there it is. My client, a third year art student at Ivy University. He has a cold. So. <laughs> okay, let me get this straight. Ah, oh, crap, hold on. And I'm back. So, so just so we're clear, Phoenix Wright went from an ace or from an art student to a lawyer because he was so impressed by Mia defending him. But then later, when she asked him why he got into lawyering, he credited something that happened in, when he was in grade school. <laughs> I would be thoroughly upset about the erasure of women's work and women's impact were it not for the fact that this is so clearly a retcon. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just gonna go with it, okay? We're just gonna go with it. Why is he sick, though? That's gonna end up being relevant to the case in some way. And you, you would think that at some point the fact that he was falsely accused of murder would have been brought up during the many, many times we were counseling a nervous client like Maya or something. But whatever, it's fine. Doug Swallow. <laughs> Doug Swallow, Jesus. Uh, the victim, he was a fourth year pharmacology student at Ivy University. And Dahlia Hawthorne, Phoenix Wright's girlfriend, dated the victim Doug Swallow up until eight months ago. Okay. <sighs> so what did we see? We saw Doug and Phoenix fighting over Dahlia, with Doug telling Phoenix to stop seeing her, um, and then Doug died, and Phoenix is the one that was arrested for it. I'm extremely nervous because Dahlia is painfully pretty, so I'm assuming that she's probably either very foolish or very evil or both. <laughs> I'm just saying. I I love this series, I do, but I don't have really high uh, expectations here for Dahlia's character development. <laughs> What's wrong? Do you have a cold or something, Mr. Rye? Actually, it's right. Like the Flying Brothers. People screw it up all the time. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for. My doc says this way, I won't give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Wright. You have nothing to fear in court today. If you are truly innocent, I promise I will save you. Uh, please let go of my shirt. <laughs> That's right. He's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. I do like getting to see Mia as a novice. My name is Mia Faye. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. But that trial traumatized me so badly, I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm going to win. Oh, for my client and for myself. I really like that. She didn't really have much of a backstory before then, except just that she became a lawyer because of something, 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 her mother. And that was never very clear at all. Are we going to get into that in this game? I've got to see if I remember. Her mother was consulted by the police on a case and gave bad or wrong or fraudulent information to the police. It's unclear and disappeared in shame and ignominy. Um, and Mia became a lawyer to follow up on that. It, it was it was kind of confusing. Um, so, so we'll have to figure that out. Oh, it's against, it's against the guy. And it's the same judge. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, your honor. Oh, it's
it's so good to see her alive. The prosecution is ready, your honor. His hair! Oh my goodness! Oh! Oh! Oh no! The defense today is... Ms... Ms. Mia Fey, was it? Y yes your honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Crosberg was to be leading the defense. So how does this... She asked for the case last night. And I guess we're still on the three-day thing that makes not a lot of sense. Yes! Well, you see, Mr. Crossberg had a, a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him standing there right next to you? Yes, well... You, you're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Get your toughest look on. <sighs> she slams the desk. Of course, Your Honor! I think. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. Oh my gosh. He's flipping his hair! No! <gasps> no! I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Don't worry, little girl. It will all be over soon. What was that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. Also... Phoenix Wright didn't even remember this guy, even after two cases with him. But he's the guy that tried to get him put in prison. I'm just saying. <laughs> the incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. He was a fourth year student studying pharmacology. Hmm. It sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body and the defendant who had obviously bungled his getaway. Then they called the police. Hmm. This certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence. Seriously? They think Phoenix cut a power line? Time took place behind an IBU building. Alright, let's take a good look at it. You've got what looks like a bulletin board. You have a umbrella which with a snapped handle or a bent handle. A broken power line. And I don't see anything else. He didn't write Phoenix's name on the ground, so it's obviously not Phoenix is the murder. By the way. I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. <laughs> your reputation for sagacity is well earned, your honor. The truth is that this victim died a rather unusual death. An unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? Oh, this is to show that we... Uh, fatal electric shock. A simple question. I thought I might loosen you up a bit. I am a genteel man, if you will. A what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. A perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause. Go on. Please say you know at least as much. I'm so sorry. I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Aww. Uh, my hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Now see here. The details of the case are filed under the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? Ah! Uh, the court record! I can see that by pressing tab! All of the weapons we need can be found in the court record. 
Take a good hard look at the data there and think carefully before you answer, my dear. Yes, sir. I'll do just that. I've got to stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. I just pressed tab. Now then, would the attorney for the defense please answer the question? What was the cause of death? According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of new, super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer to that will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. Wh what's that? White motive, of course. Apparently, there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? What do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. He is one smooth operator if you catch my drift. Does that mean he's trying to hit on women all the time? Because it feels like he's trying to hit on me and I don't like it. They don't call him the Rookie Killer for nothing, you know. <laughs> Why do they call him that? Because he's never won a case against us! Now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time I would like to see some supporting evidence. Evidence? No need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all our weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and shove it into old Greybeard's face! Yes, sir! Into old Greybeard's face! Mr. Grosberg, try to set a better example for the young lady. Mia, evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are there as well. You could toggle between the profiles and evidence with Tab, so be sure to go over it all. Actually, sure, you have to use horror, but it's fine. I, my goodness, his lips. I do like that, um... They're actually telling you about profiles, because I feel like the second tutorial kind of didn't drive that home as, as well as it could have, so yay! What was the cause of bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? The reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Fay. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. Clearly, she has some part to play in this story. Ah. Uh. Clearly? What an interesting way to present a theory. Hmm. Ah, he's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Vey? It's fine. After all, Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. The court calls Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. Witness 
Please, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes. My name is Phoenix, right? My job is, uh... Well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. No, no. He means, what did you do before you were arrested? Oh, uh, shoot! I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you are suspected in the death of your fellow student. But I didn't do it! I'm innocent, I tell you! I'm telling you, I was... Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his call to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, your honor! He's so earnest! Uh, I... I admit I was there. But I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. <laughs> and yet we end up dating Edgeworth later, so... I see. You hardly knew the victim? Right. Like you said, I'm not a killer. Phew. It looks like the judge understands. Ugh. You're being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? Hehe. <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be? This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right. And it's the defense's duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if a witness's testimony contains contradictions. Contradictions? If a witness is lying, their statements will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client! Even if he is your client, in court all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that testimony just now? That there was a contradiction? Why would I... Like... No, I'm fine, it's all good. Now then, your cross-examination if you please, Miss Faye. Please, Mr. Wright, tell me you haven't been lying. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? I mean, I guess he's lying about barely knowing the guy, but... Is there? Hold it! When you say there, you mean the place where the victim was murdered? Yeah, sort of. The place where something happened anyway. Something? You can't hide what happened. We have photographic evidence. Anyway, Mr. Wright, what were you doing at the scene of the crime? I thought you said you didn't know the victim, Mr. Swallow. It was just a coincidence. We bumped into each other by accident. A coincidence, huh? But I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. You say you found the body? Who called the police? Huh? Ah, uh, unfortunately, it was other students that notified the police. Other students? That's correct. They were witnesses. Witnesses who saw the defendant standing there next to the body in shock. What? Is this true, Mr. Wright? Could you stop sneezing every time you're in a bind? Well, it's true that I was pretty shocked when I found the body. But, but I... I hardly knew the guy to begin with. You didn't know his face or even his name, right? Right! Well, no, I mean, that is... So, which is it? Did you know him or not? Do you guys not understand hardly knew? Like, I hardly know some of my coworkers. That doesn't mean I don't know their name and face. No, see here. You can't avoid answering questions by sneezing all day. Uh, well, I did know his name. News to me? Why didn't he tell me that before? I heard he used to date Dolly. Who is this Dolly person? Ah, yes, that would be the defendant's lover, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, I see. Ah, young love, so bittersweet. But that's all I knew about him. I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. 
Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. That's right. I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him, why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Well, Mr. Wright... No, it wasn't me. I'm not a killer, I swear. Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yes, well... He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Did you see it at the crime scene? The Union Jack, I mean. Yes, that's right. I saw it at the crime scene. That's why I figured he must love British stuff, you see? It's true. Cross my heart. I swear I didn't do it. He's acting fishier than the salmon I ate last night. May I ask you something, Miss Faye? Yes, Your Honor. What is it now? Who is this person anyway? This Union Jack fellow? The Union Jack is the name of the United Kingdom's flag. Oh, I see. So you mean like the stars and stripes, right? As usual, Your Honor, your insight astounds me. Hey, something just occurred to me. Isn't there something strange about this bit just now? Mia, there is a contradiction here. Mr. Crasper! Quickly now, show that boy you mean business. With evidence, I mean. Okay, Mia, check the court record carefully. Well, my dear, do you think you can manage on your own from this point? I got it. One year ago, I was in a courtroom just like this. I can do it. I can handle this myself. You must have tried to bite off more than you can chew, Mia. I'll be fine. I know what I have to do. Remember, you can always press him to get more information. Oh, and one more thing. When you're going to state a contradiction, make sure you present definitive proof. Okay, Mia. One more time from the very beginning of his testimony. Okay. Here we go. He said he saw the Union Jack at the crime scene on his shirt. But oh, he's wearing a jacket. That's a problem. Phoenix, baby, why you lie? Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Miss Faye, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing! I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body. If that was really the case, you wouldn't know that, would you? You'd have no idea what, at all what he was wearing underneath his jacket. Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me! Please forgive me! Baby! Mia, you've made our client cry! Let him! That pee on his chest doesn't stand for Phoenix anyway! What does it stand for? I don't get that. I can't believe I trusted him! Mr. Wright was all wrong! <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear this man did not stumble upon the scene of the crime. Oh! Uh-oh! Did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I... yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine you took an over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right! It kills colds good! Hey, wait a second! How did you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? Hehe, <laughs> would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it? Does this have anything to do with the case? Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold venison is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look from another photo from the crime scene. What's this? In the victim's hand, it's... it's Cold Killer X! Yes, but even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment! I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. 
There's no doubt as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to, especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it. What? Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine dropped by Mr. Wright and hid it in his hand. His purpose in doing so can only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. Seriously. Um. Order! Order in the court! Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well, the court will accept them in a record. Alright, let's go look at them. What time does that say? I can't read analog clocks. It's a little after three, I think. What's, what was that? The victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all of this? Ugh, this is really bad. Oh, my buttocks, my poor hemorrhoids. The truth is, I went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 2.45 behind that building. We talked for a bit, and then at around 3 we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. I'd been taking cold killer X for the last 2 or 3 days, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the test what you gave previously! I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony more credible. Miss Faye, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright, don't tell any more lies! Hold it! Had you ever met the victim before then? No, never! But that day, he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. And this Dolly person is... My, um, it's kind of embarrassing. She's my sweetheart. <sighs> what was that for, Miss Mia? Oh, I'm sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. What? Why? Dahlia Hawthorne was also the lover of the murder victim, Doug Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. Hmm, so it was one of those nasty love triangles, I see. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 2.45 behind the building. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, and we were both there right on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the Alchemist of IVU. An alchemist? I see. I gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. Oh, fascinating. He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details? I want to hear about the high voltage stuff. I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. That's right. They sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high voltage cables everywhere. High voltage cables. Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. We talked for a bit, and then at around three, we split up. What was it you were talking about? You know, 
You got me. Maybe we should hang out again sometime. Hang out again sometime. I wish that were true. Then later when I went back, I found him lying there. So you say you went back? Uh, yeah. That's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Were you angry with him? Well, that's right, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright? Why did you go back there? Uh, I thought maybe we could make up. <laughs> My sweet little bisexual mess of a boy. <laughs> I want to hug him. Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one is buying this. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? I suppose common sense is not always common. Did anyone else know you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Her mini omelets are magically delicious. Why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm sorry. I felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. Why does Mia have a violent crush on Phoenix five minutes after meeting him and also... She thinks he's a murderer. I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What do you mean? I knew it was too much work for a little girl. Huh. However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor? How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Well, that is... You are correct, Your Honor. How exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If someone, if I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. Your Honor. Yes, Miss Fay. I believe that if we were to piece together everything we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That would be most impressive. Quite the brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of court, yes. An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Of course I know that. I had totally forgotten about that. Now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. I mean, that? Is that too obvious? I mean, I, I honestly think it was the cry or the the, crim the pharmacology lab, but we don't have anything about that yet. As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? But there is nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain in a bit more detail. Miss Bay, where exactly in the photo is the murder weapon? Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... what is that? A severed electrical cable, your honor. Remember the testimony we've heard. The machines the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then the high voltage cable. Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. That certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what that really implies. 
the only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was the defendant. Or it was an accident? Do you guys have accidental deaths? That much is certainly true. And that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish Mr. Wright as the murderer. You do? What is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean that the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Ah, you mean... Yes. It was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Print could have left a Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Intent on murder, he squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. Order, order! That's enough! I think we can conclude there is no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Stick a fork in us, we're done. Mr. Crossbird! My hemorrhoids never lie. The show is over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. No, you're wrong! Mr. Wright is innocent! No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor! At this time, I am prepared to render a verdict in this case. Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But I... I can't. I just can't say it. If I told you what really happened, I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. Miss Faye. Oh. Oh, his little face. Baby. No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you, and I'll represent you to the very end. We've already established the defendant's guilt. There is no further need for him to say anything. Wait a minute. Mr. Wright, I... I'll tell you what really happened. I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need for further... I... I did it. I admit it. I pushed him. It's my fault. My fault that Doug Swallow is dead. That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. You're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it. Don't talk about her like that. Oh, he shoved. What you just said, was that the truth? Yes, I I was afraid. Afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are. Please, please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I... I believe in you! Oh! Ah, uh, thank you! I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. It feels like my hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem Shake. That guy... He was talking bad about Dolly. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. 
a little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back. But he was just lying there. Dead. Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock. And that, as they say, is that. A simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a doofus like him couldn't miss that. Hmm. Miss Vey. Let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he is innocent, there will be some kind of evidence somewhere to prove it. His serious face just kills me. I love him so much. That guy, he was talking bad about Dolly. So what kinds of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said she was a bad girl. Ah, <laughs> uh, is that all? Yes. Well... Mr. Fay, you heard him yourself. Oh boy, you're not doing yourself any favors here, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after he said that, I just... I just... I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. Sometimes I go past it like that, too fast. Can you tell me a about what happened in a little more detail? That guy, he just said what he wanted to say to me. And then he put on the jacket he was holding and started to leave. That's when I lost my temper and flew into a furious frenzy. A light, gentle shove to the chest. And when you did that, there were no severed cables anywhere to be seen? that you merely overlooked it. Well, I guess it's possible. What are you doing? Don't let that guy steamroll over you like cheap asphalt. I believe what's important here is the moment which occurred. Let's continue with the testimony witness. A loud noise? What would you say that noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure. But it was really loud. It was like, snap! You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. You're not qualified to decide that! What should I do? I'm treading on dangerous ground here. Mr. Wright, 
That loud noise you heard may be extremely important. Try to remember what it was. How do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Ah! Oh! Could it... Could it have been... Yes? Could it have been? Hurry up and tell us! When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. He fell right on top of it, and it broke! That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? Did the umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail, kind of like the owner. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was soaked to the bone. Hmm, Miss Faye, what do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Ah, uh, well... This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No, this cheap umbrella is more than important. It's vital. I want to officially have it entered into testimony. How perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bit about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. should still be under him, and he should be on his back instead of on his front. Objection! Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. It's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! His hair... Order! Order! The victim moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want it presented evidence immediately. But the umbrella could have simply blown away by the wind. <clears throat> According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. But... Well, I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial. But as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. No! I must say... I still find it rather hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. The victim fell on top of his umbrella. There was a loud sound. Well done, Mia! <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess. You have another witness. Exactly. And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean Dolly? I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's something you should have brought up before now. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? 
I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Ms. Dahlia Hawthorne. Miss Faye, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I... It's all right. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so I guess I can start to relax, huh? Relax, my boy! You can't be serious after hiding such important facts! But... But my next witness is Dolly, right? She'll save me! I just know she will! Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She's the love of my life, that's why! The love of your life, huh? Would you mind telling me about you and... Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure! No problem! Dolly and I, we first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side. Oh, he is already studying to be a lawyer. Okay, that's sweet. Okay, so the Edgeworth stuff we're not completely throwing away, which is good. That dress! Why is she in a prom dress with a parasol at a courthouse? One day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was Faith that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here! Take a look at this! She gave me this... She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of our love. She had been wearing it around her neck that day, but then she took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. She gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little do dolly. It certainly is a little bottle, all right. It makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Sweetheart. They met in court and she asked him to wear something that she didn't... So what is it? Evidence of something else? Anyway... After that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating? Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. Oh my god. That's not dating, Phoenix. You, you're being used, honey. What a strange girl, asking for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne, eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? Yeah, it was! How did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's this? A newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in the courthouse? Murder? What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe there is some connection between these two cases, am I correct? I hope you don't mind, Mr. Crossberg. Murder in the courthouse. Very little information is being disclosed at this time, since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with the victim. This is a fine time to bring this up. Oh, so maybe the reason she was hitting Marvin wasn't because, or Martin wasn't because she's m violently in love with Phoenix and hitting someone every time he gushes about Dahlia. It's that she hates Dahlia and she's worried about Phoenix, maybe? I need to finish this myself. Oh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look at this in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. It looks like recess is about over. We better all get moving. 
I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. So we took this case believing that Dahlia is a murderer and killed once and killed again? I guess? That's a lot. Um, so... <laughs> so my... How many do we have to work with? We'll start at the bottom this time. My my prediction that poor Dahlia would be either evil or uh, or or dim-witted um, so far is is just saying. <laughs> um, but we'll we'll continue this in the next video. Once again, my name is Anna Mardal, and this has been Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Thank you so much for coming along with me. Bye bye.